Greetings friends, and welcome to a brand new Cryptarch. This is version 0.3, just updated a couple days ago. Um, it's Thanksgiving Day, I'm a little sick, so forgive the quality of my voice, it's not the mic. Um, however, I just had to tell you about this because it's very exciting. It's everything I wanted from Cryptarch, which was more excuses to play Cryptarch. So let's just peek at what they've got here and then I'll let you get back to your turkey. For one we have that's right alternate suits um, as well as alternate art. Unlockables was exactly what I wanted from this game. Um, different approaches, different ways to play. So let's take a look. First off you need artifacts to unlock these. You pay for each of the unlocks with one or two artifacts. Two for a suit, one for an alt. Um, artifacts are a fourth bonus objective that you can uh, obey or not when you go on certain missions. Um, I'm not sure how many you might see in a playthrough. It, there might be as many as one per mission selection choice. Uh, you can probably expect to collect one or two in every full playthrough, but uh, they shouldn't be too hard to get. I believe they're bugged right now. I'm pretty sure I got my first artifact when I did not obey the uh, <laughs> the objective and accidentally destroyed immediately the thing that I should not have. Um, so that's how you get artifacts. Let's take a look at the suits. The gun head, of course, has that boost where it flies about from the half a screen in one direction. Uh, quite quickly. It says it dodges incoming projectiles. I assume that doesn't mean it makes you invincible. Uh, not that I've tried it all that often. Uh, it does come with four weapon slots, four item slots per use. Or does it? Yeah, and of course this is a list of starting tech on the right here. Nice alternate costumes. Dig it. Uh, the Rook here is a heavy suit. Um, with a full encasement shield uh, at the cost of mobility, it says. I assume that means that it's slow when encased. And a built-in kinetic buffer, meaning you don't get uh, blast around as much from explosions. Uh, I have used the kinetic buffer item, and uh, it greatly reduces the knockback from explosives and everything else. does begin with a shotgun and a tractor beam, powerful items. Um, note that the gun head also has a shotgun and a medium machine gun. Uh, so this one also machine gun burst, sticky grenades. Uh, so most of this thing's power comes from these two new abilities. It will not have the boost, of course. Then there's Jeanette. Uh, this is a really interesting suit. Six item slots, but only two weapon slots. Uh, so half the weapon slots, but 50% more item slots. Uh, built-in knockback pulse which pushes away incoming enemies and projectiles an item I never actually used uh, but I imagined would be quite useful uh, when the screen gets to be pretty intense there's probably a couple other uses for it uh, that people will find out plus built-in quality ammo meaning you do 20% extra damage with the two weapons you do bring uh, plus she begins with remote nukes um, mortar a uh, special turret or a turret item that I haven't ever seen used. Uh, that's a new item as of version 0 0.3. And uh, what kind of shield does he start with? Oh, maybe he just has shield built in. I don't know. Um, so Jeanette is definitely going to be able to take advantage of a lot of the cool uh, items, the equipment that uh, the other people maybe just don't have room for. Uh, next we have the Salamander. Uh, has an afterburner, a continuous boost, continuous boost that projects damaging flames. A uh, bunch of really hardcore speedrun characters might be able to take advantage of a continuous boost. Uh, also takes no damage from fire or slime and begins with a variety of fire and slime items. Uh, the Flamer, which is an excellent weapon that penetrates through the invincible shells of systems uh, and of course penetrates through enemies, kind of short ranged, does great damage, 
a uh, little low on the ammunition side. The slime mortar, something that I kind of wanted to play with, but never had a great reason to, especially when I was concerned about hurting myself, perhaps. But with uh, this hazard coating built into the salamander, that's not a worry. Uh, the saw blade, which does allow you to reflect projectiles, didn't seem to do much damage when I used it, but maybe they've changed that. Uh, just an interesting take on uh, starting things. I'm not sure how viable the salamander will be compared to some of the other bonuses built in, but that afterburner can let you just speed through missions. And your weapons allow you to continuously do damage even after you've left that slime mortar in particular. So I'm really curious to see how the salamander plays out. Lastly, we have the intruder with a sleek look if its silhouette is any guide. Um, it, its built-in launchable short-range teleport beacon is going to be utterly fantastic for some really stylish play and uh, safety. Uh, it can only have a max of five hull points, but true masters of the game will probably be playing with like three on every mission. Uh, just keep costs down and because they're total bosses. Especially with the ability to teleport, the safety, uh, this guy seems to have the skill cap on lockdown. Also, the Hush Puppy Sniper Rifle, its only initial weapon besides the EMP Blaster, uh, which does do a little damage but mostly just disables enemies, will allow it to stealthily infiltrate wrecks and uh, kill enemies at long range. The Hush Puppy Sniper Rifle, with a very slow firing rate, incredibly accurate, um, and does a ton of damage per shot, as well as disabling enemies that it hits, is utterly fantastic. Um, and uh, a great weapon to start off with as you can use it for the rest of the game no matter how you build yourself out. Also begins with uh, a cloaking field uh, which gives you five seconds of cloak and a sensor suite so that you can attack ghost ships immediately. Uh, the intruder is pretty sharp looking uh, alternate suit. So let's see if we can find any of the new objectives that they've installed. Here we have keep X number of systems. Here it's keep two systems. So don't destroy everything, but it's your choice what you leave. Um, here we have don't trip alarms. That's new. Uh, destroy all systems, also new. Don't use repair kits, also new. Um, those I think are the new ones I saw. There's also a new system that shuffles the location of uh, existing sh systems every minute. Um, so that gives you 60 seconds to get to a system's current location and destroy it before it swaps locations. Um, this thing is going to be a major pain, especially on the bigger ships. So uh, be sure to target that pretty quickly because 60 seconds is kind of a short time in this game, especially if you have to fly across a ship and then fight off all the guards, and then you have to destroy the system itself before you run out of time, uh, you're going to need it. They've also increased the time limit, the goal time, for uh, missions by quite a lot. The first time I finished one of these new missions, I had five and a half minutes left over, and I was like, wait, that must be a bug. And then I noticed that they were giving me 10, 15 minutes to take out each level and I was making tons of overtime, so I think they've decided to be a little more lenient on that front. So all in all, a uh, fantastic update for Cryptarch, still in early access, so there's plenty more to come. Uh, and I'm just terribly excited to start a new series for this game uh, sometime soon. Uh, I did just today upload a bunch of Cryptarch content for everyone who's enjoying their Thanksgiving off and wants to watch it. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe for future content, and I hope you enjoy Cryptarch as much as I do. Until next time, farewell.